Okay, and? Hi, this is Lori Strickland. And She's a. Ah, I'm not done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get it right this time. For the theater. Okay, this is Mr. Jamie Bullens, an amazing writer, director, actor, scenic designer, costume designer. You name it, he can make snow. It's amazing. Um. Uh, uh, yes, and this is Lori Strickland. She's a fabulous uh, actress as well as. Producer, director, <laughs> adapter, writer, too. So, yeah, we do all kinds of stuff. We and, have, yeah. We and wear a lot of hats. A lot of hats. We wear a lot of hats. Yeah. Let's try that again. Hi, this is Lloyd Strickland. And this is Jamie Mullins. And why are we here? <laughs> no, why are we here, Jamie? Go ahead. We are here because we have a production of Christmas Carol in New York that we are eventually going to bring to Broadway, or off-Broadway, or we're bringing it to New York. New York doesn't have a Christmas Carol, and this is the greatest city in the world, and there is no Christmas Carol, so we want to give you one. We want to make a Christmas Carol for you. Yeah. Why are we here? That's it. You just said it. <laughs> really, and go. So, uh, if somebody asked you, how is this different than any other Carol, what would you say? Oh, how much time do you have? <laughs> I think we only have like 12 minutes. I'm going to speak frankly and say, God, so we found something last year, some of it by mistake, some of it by miracle, uh, some of it just the magic of what can happen when people all pitch in to make something. We made, we made something beautiful. We found the heart of the story. And really what we want is to tell it to more people. And we want more people to have the opportunity to, to find the story for themselves at this time of year that can be confusing and you, everyone tells you what Christmas should be and we want, we want people to have an opportunity to experience this story in an intimate way in their own hearts and be on the journey with us. Dickens answers the question better. We, we decided to go back to every word that Dickens wrote rather than writing our own or laying music on top of it where everything comes out of his actual story. And uh, he actually wrote 200 years ago about this story. I have endeavored in this ghostly little book to raise a ghost of an idea which shall not put my readers out of humor with themselves, with each other, and with the season or with me. May it haunt their houses pleasantly and no one wish to lay it their faithful friend and servant, Charles Dickens. And so yeah, this is a story everybody knows. They're gonna to come to the theater, they already know what's going to happen. I mean, probably, unless they're a small child and they've never heard this story, but pretty much everybody knows what it's about, or they think they do. But, it, and I know, I keep going back to the word, the heart. Like the one thing I know we have is heart, and that's exactly when we were even deciding who to cast, it, it really just came down, not only to their talent, but their heart. Like, are they the kind of actor who's willing to tell this story that's been told a million times and, and make it new and like open their heart and like really share this story? Because it's the only way it works is if it actually is that simple that we're, that we're on to something. And I think our Carol too is, it's quiet. There's a lot of moments of silence in it and the music, it, I, I guess I could just strip what down I'm saying actually. <laughs> When Dickens talked about it being a ghost story, what he meant was dancing with the ghosts of the past and the present in your life. You know, it wasn't like spooky, scary ghosts. And what ends up happening in our version, because there are no bells and whistles and there are no fancy pyrotechnics, is that it's quiet and it's poignant and it's profound and it's moving and it's honest. And when it's funny, it's hilarious and goofy. But when it's when it's Poignant is poignant. Wherever it's told, I mean, people are compelled to tell it and find a way to make it ours. I think ours is a carol for now, for the times we live in. Um, it's contemporary, it's simple, it's just good old storytelling. It's back to the heart of it. Interesting story because it, it, it touches everybody. Uh, everybody has a story about Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. uh, either when you were a child, uh, the movie, the theatrical production you saw, the, the story itself as it was told to you in some way, shape, or form, it is extremely personal. Uh, Christmas memories are huge uh, memories for everybody. Uh, they're not always good, but most, most of the time they're extremely uh, strong and extremely personal. And so I think Christmas Carol has that for everyone. Uh, 
um, it's timeless and, and, and everybody has their own experience with it. So you can't really talk to people without getting that. And I think one of the things that we want to do is that we want to do a stage version of the Christmas Carol that, that touches each audience member in their own way. It may be by referring to specific memories. It may be because we're really attached to the text. Uh, and the text is extremely important to us. Uh, so the story is important. Uh, and every person that we've talked to so far who has either seen the reading that we did last year. Last year we were fortunate enough to do a reading at the Abington, which is where we're sitting right now. Uh, and uh, it was a great experience. And everyone that was involved, either sitting on the stage or watching the show, talked about how special it was to them. Uh, mm -hmm. and how individual it was to them. And I think that's one of the things that's so important for us with this production is that we want it to be a Christmas carol for now, mm -hmm. a Christmas carol for today, and a Christmas carol for everybody. So that everyone who comes to see it, it's their own Christmas carol. Like, yeah. it can be your Christmas carol, it could be your Christmas carol, it's certainly my Christmas carol, mm -hmm. it's certainly yours. In part is about money. It's about generosity, and really, it was a Christmas miracle that we pulled this off last year, and that we've gotten this far, which I think makes it extra special. That along the way, all these artists have just wanted to give, including Austin, reading this role for us, like going from my living room with hot chocolate to here at the amazing Abingdon, that donated the theater to us in exchange for us doing a benefit, like the whole thing. It just keeps happening, you know. Even the even the gentlemen filming this right now are here. <laughs> I mean, like it's really been that way, and I think it says a lot about the project. And and so you know, there comes that moment of like, how are we gonna make the snow? How are we gonna make the lights? And really, you know, we want to make this for New York. I want to make this show for New York. I think New York is the greatest city in the world, and the, and for the theater, it's it's to the heart. And that we awesome. one more time. Which, uh, who's in it? Oh, Austin Pendleton is playing Scrooge. <laughs> Wait, Jamie, who's in it? Austin Pendleton, he's playing what? Scrooge. No, okay. crap. No, you should know who? Austin Pendleton. What? We got, what we got a cast and an adaptation. We have Austin Pendleton, so it will happen somewhere. And a cat. But we don't want to do it in my living room, so we want more people to come. And we have a hat. <laughs> Something about the story that brings out the generosity of people. Mm -hmm. We hope. <laughs> I, uh, I like... Um, and then when we rehearsed it in the God, this part certainly, but the whole piece is profound. And you start to live inside it. Of course, I have to 